Good afternoon and welcome to today's presentation, Models for Transforming Healthcare, Ways to Involve Patients, Health Plans, Employees and Suppliers. I'm uh, Dr. Eric Norman, a board member of the Norwegian Hospital and Health Service Association and IHF president designate. I am pleased to welcome Dr. Claudio Luis uh, Lottenberg, president of Hospital Israelita, Albert Einstein Hospital, Brazil. Dr. Lottenberg has served as the president of uh, Sociedade uh, Israelita Brasileira Albert Einstein. My Brazilian is not very good to pronounce, but uh, I'll try. He has done that since 2001. He also serves uh, as a senior advisor at University of Sao Paulo uh, Medical School Foundation uh, as chairman of the, and as chairman of the LEAD uh, Health, a private organization that brings together entrepreneurs in 12 countries and four continents. During his tenure as, um, at the Sociedad Israelita Brasileira, Albert Einstein, Dr. Lottenberg uh, has um, championed the inception of uh, its diagnostic and preventive medicine uh, and um, its institutes of education and research, social responsibility and contribution. Under his leadership, the organization not only has diversified and grown in size, but also in uh, relevance and importance, becoming uh, the leader in healthcare innovation in Brazil. Dr. Lottenberg received his medical degree from uh, Escola uh, Palista uh, de Medicina in 1984. He completed a residency and fellowship in ophthalmology and obtained a PhD in medicine. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Louis, Claudio Luis Lottenberg. Thank you, don't worry, I could understand everything that you spoke in Portuguese, in English, so it's not that confusion. I'm very happy to be here. We are very happy to be with a big group from Brazil and very proud of having a chance to present something related to our work and to our institution. In 1955, the group of Jewish people that has moved to Brazil soon after the second big war, they decided to make a contribution to our country. And they could have chosen a lot of things but they decided to follow what to represent a value in the Jewish life. And in this, this way, they decided to contribute to the life. And healthcare probably is part of this main contribution. And this was the idea. And the first step was to build a hospital. I would say that the, since the very beginning, there was the perception that this hospital should contribute as something related to excellence, high quality, even though the modern knowledge related to, to, to excellence and quality was not the same as we used to have today. Uh, we had a vision that would be possible not only to do something in a good way, but to assume a position of leadership, what means a strict commitment with innovation and trying to create a reference to other institutions in our country. The values were Jewish values that we try to maintain in every movement that we do inside of the institution. And we understand that to keep these values probably is one of the reasons that made that the culture that we have inside of the, our society has been present since the very beginning till now. We had the first president, Manuel Widal, who was a visionary, somebody who was able to convince Jewish people to make the first donations. The reference was the movement that was happening here in the United States. And when he passed away, 
in the very beginning of the work of the hospital. He was replaced by a cardiologist, Joseph Fair, who had something like a passion related to technology. When Joseph Fair decided to buy his second NMR to our institution, it was also the second NMR of the whole South America. When Joseph Fair left, he was replaced by Reinaldo Brand. And Reinaldo Brand could had the perception that quality could not be related to new machines and to new technology, and we should measure what we do in a way to compare, to have metrics, and it was the beginning of the quality system of Albert Einstein in 90s. We started with him, and when he finished his period almost 30 years ago, and I had to replace him, I had to follow not only the steps of those that came before me, but I had to try to find other alternatives to make our work even better, with more penetration in the country, with more representation, and try to achieve more people in our country. We decided to work under a governance system. We started to, est to establish a compliance systematic way of working, and we decided to implement time by time with a stronger effort a, 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 a branch related to social responsibility and a branch related to knowledge. And every time that I am with my people and those that work with me, I used to say that we have an obligation of never stop. And we have to uh, pay attention to details, even though, because without them, we are not going to make the difference that we intend to do. Recently, we started to work with AIHI. It's part of the development of our commitment with quality policy. And we could realize that many aspects of the IHI were already present in our institution, as you're going to have a chance to see. And with this work that we develop, we today are probably one of the institutions in South America, there is a reference to IHI in terms of quality. And we still have a lot to do. This is the whole scenario of the institution. We are a non-profit organization. We have activities in five main areas. We have a hospital, diagnostic medicine, education, research, and innovation and social responsibility. And it's interesting that you're gonna realize here by this chart in yellow, in the boxes in yellow, that we have today a strong participation in the public area. And we are absolutely sure that it's important not only because of the roots of our system that is, was created in the Constitution as a social right, but mainly because 75% of our population is strictly dependent on the public system, even though in terms of funding, we have some, but something that is absolutely unequal, since 50% of the money goes to this 75% of the population, and 25% they keep the other 50%. Are general numbers. In a couple of days, they are going to be completely different since it's going to start to work our second public hospital. We have very good facilities. People that have already visited our institution in Moruivi know that we have a, a, a benchmark. We are a benchmark for many institutions in the country, and uh, we are very proud of making this way, in a way to make our relation to the public system one of the remarkable points of our period as a president of the institution. We have relations all over the world. We understand that external experiences 
are very important, but not only for us, but also for them. We have many protocols that we work together. We make research. And this kind of experience is important to a new scenario of globalization, since we understand that many of the solutions are going to happen not necessarily inside of each other country, but with the digitalization, we're gonna, we are going to have many opportunities of making without borders, without frontiers. We had recently a chance to have in Brazil the Latin America Forum, a partnership between Albert Einstein Hospital and the Institute for Health Improvement. Many countries were represented, and we can observe time by time that not only doctors are taking part in the scenario and interested about healthcare. I can say that 30% of the human resources all over the world are related to healthcare. So when we discuss healthcare, we are not just discussing healthcare assistance. We are not just discussing opportunities to improve a social right, but we are discussing something that is very important in terms of the economic life of the countries and of the world. Our history on quality starts formally on the 90s. We decide to be certificated. After that, we were accredited by the UN Commission. Recently, we are with IHI. We have looked for many institutions in terms of having people from outside auditing our processes. We do believe it's important to bring people from outside. Sometimes it's more acceptable than ourselves trying to convince people that they have to achieve new elements and new challenges. And maybe because of this, today we have made many changes that in the very beginning were very difficult, but in the long term, we were able to make them happen. So we still have to discuss roles and responsibilities of stakeholders in patient care, because we do believe that we can do and we must do more. The stakeholders must always behave in accordance to what is the best for whom, for the patient. And it's difficult sometimes even with the doctors, and I work as a doctor, to convince them that the rights of the patients, they have to be first, but something that we have to put it very clear. We have to respect all stakeholders. We have to understand that each one has its own role. It's absolutely possible to achieve our objectives, trying to understand that the others, they also have their own objectives. Ethical conduct among all of us, follow the law, but much more than, than that, respect the role and the limits and according to Weber, ethics is when you can recognize the rights of the other, because it's very easy to work in favor of our own rights. But let's talk a little bit about the accountabilities of th stakeholders in patient care. <laughs> First of all, physicians. Physicians must be worried about diagnosis, prescription, supervision and management of care, procedure, monitoring and education of the patient and family. And I would say that physicians should be not just technicians, they should be the real leaders of the process. Hospital and providers, they must take care of the procedures, organization of care and its process, quality and safety of the system, management of staff, and physicians support to the patient and also support to the families. The insurance companies and the HMOs comply with the land insurance contracts signed by the patient and the law and regulations established by the Brazilian National Health Agency facilitate the flow of information and approvals in partnerships with the provider. Insurance help us to have large scale. Insurance help us to negotiate with 
big amount of people. Suppliers industry, supplier materials, equipment, and medication safely, practice of reasonable pricing, considering patient access and sustainability of the entire chain, adherence to best practice, and national and international codes of ethics, particularly with regards to relations with doctors and potential conflicts of interest, something that we are discussing a lot, and we have to understand that conflict of interest is not as hard as people used to say, because in the moment that you put everything clear, great part of the conflict has a chance to disappear. In Brazil, you have the same problem that you have all over the world, with the aging, with the increase of numbers of technology, we have problems to make our system sustainable. And because of this, we can realize that inflation compared to the medical inflation compared to the general inflation is much higher. But a lot of this is because we are putting some kind of technology without comparison with old technologies that many times are good enough and they should not still be replaced. So we are in a world, in an area where we have low productivity, low competitiveness in healthcare, and in the country we need to improve productivity and competitiveness through something that digitalization is helping a lot, this possibility of making things much more faster because of the automation and probably trying to innovate. For sure, all those things, they need education, but the idea is to have less human resources, less financial resources, and lack less physical resources. Once again, trying to do our productivity even better and more competitiveness. So let's start with the context that is very clear to the ANAP, whose president is my good friend, Francisco Balestrin, a good friend. We have realized that the occupancy rate has been very high. We have hospitals increasing the number of beds and the occupancy rate is still high. The problem is that the annual operating cost of a bed in operation demand almost the same amount that you spend to build the bed. So the investment that you have to do is very high. Is this the single way for you to increase the opportunities to have patients with you? So let's start with something more objective. Let's start with patient flow case. Who are the stakeholders, physicians, players, and suppliers? What is the proposal to study the patient flow? And in the moment that you can study the patient flow as if it were an ABC costing analyzing, you can realize that you have many opportunities to make your flow faster, less expensive, with less people. What represents that you're gonna make it cheaper and you do are not going to need to put more beds because you are making your beds to work much better. I remember when I was secretary of health affairs in the city of Sao Paulo, the average time that people used to spend inside of the hospital were almost 12 days. And I'm not talking about a high complexity institution, regular beds. So. I could say to the mayor in that time that we had a lot of hospitals that were closed inside of Sao Paulo because the hospital was not making the turnaround in the way they should do it. So we started to study this. It was not that simple. We put a lot of people working together under the supervision of our CEO, Miguel Sandrolo, who is here with me. We create a multi-departmental accelerating program with decentralization of decisions, making to a matrix team empowered by the organization leadership and dashboard of goals, changing minds, improving, diminishing determined uh, steps, 
And the point is that it would observe a many opportunities that I'm going to show you. For example, you have the project of hip arthroplasty, and we started to work with the patients before being admitted, visiting their homes, trying to explain what is going to be, creating opportunities, ways to make the recovery time be better, trying to change even the position of the furniture. And what happened is that when we compare those that were not visited before the procedure with those that were visited before the procedure, there was a great difference of the average time in the length of stay. Something simple that do not need a lot of resources that make you to make a discharge faster than normally. And we did it in a lot of fronts. And the point is that we could achieve a reduction in average length of stay in the last six years, provided a virtual increase of 66 beds, an increase in patient volumes without the need to increase beds in the same proportion and estimating saving close to $66 million. Let's talk about another opportunity, another case. Spine surgery, we know that we have overdiagnosis and high cost of treatment. What is the contest? Overdiagnosis and overtreatment in spine surgery. What is the problem? Lack of guidelines, high cost of implants and wrong incentives ethics, lack of transparency, and ethical issues. Let's work on that. Who are the stakeholders? Hospital, payers, suppliers, physicians. What was the proposal? To create a center of excellence on spine center. And we have been working for four years, generating savings around $50 million for the system. Here you're going to see 2,600 patients that were referred. We had made the second opinion and did surgery in, in a little bit more than 1,000 patients. We were going to spend $67 million, and we did spend $70 million. And here, something very simple in a way to create value on something that you are doing in the wrong way, just because of putting all the stakeholders together. And if you're going to follow, <coughs> sorry, if you're going to follow both treatments after that, comparing conservative and surgical, you're going to see that the outcomes are very comparable in terms of pain, dysfunction, and quality of life. So something was wrong because of lack of conversation and agreement between stakeholders. And when you're going to discuss practice, here another example. You have also in spine surgery two kinds of surgery, fusion and discompression. Fusion, much more complex much more expensive, worse for the patients in terms of recovery, this compression less expensive, more simple. Putting all the dead doctors together, the physicians together to discuss what was the protocol, look what happened. We changed our practice. It's good for whom? For the patient, for the system, also ethics. And now another point, we are not proud of it, but Brazil is the world leader in C-sections. I wish we could be proud of being champion of football, but even football cannot say anymore. We have 85% in the private sector. What is the problem? In the world, cesarean section is used when the normal birth can lead to death of the mother or child. In Brazil, unfortunately, it's a wrong. Let's discuss. Who are stakeholders? Hospital, insurance, national health agency, 
Institute of Health Improvement and Physicians. What is the proposal of this group? Adequacy of labor and birth. Let's see what happened. This is a good example for you to see the reference of IHI. You have the experience of care, the per capita cost, and the population health in terms of the repercussion in the society. The experience of care, because it's going to reduce mortality and morbidity rates, mothers and babies. Per capita, because it's going to represent between 10 to 60 percent, because when you see a baby that is going to be born before or in the wrong moment, there is a good chance that this baby is going to the intensive care unit, to the neonatal intensive care unit. So you try to put all these elements together according to IHI, and you're going to see that you're doing something interesting. See what happens. We made all this partnership between all those stakeholders that I said before. We put 37 hospitals all together, 75,000 births per year. In 2014, the rate was 82.4%, and it changed five months after, at the beginning, to 70.54 births by cesarean section. Do not think that it was something simple, but if you're going to come back to the past, not so long, 15 years ago, you're going to consider the same when you discuss the best kind of food that you have to give to our newborn. The same discussion has happened before. So it's something that we have to bring to make it very clear. We have to treat that very transparently in a way to find a better condition to the case itself, to the institution, and to the community, trying to give, for sure, a, best, a better individual experience. And we can also bring another problem when you can see all the stakeholders working together. We have lack of qualified physician and loner ranger, ranger culture. What is the context in our country? Lack of qualified physicians. Physicians trained as standalone providers, separate from other professionals and hospitals. Who is not working under the team building? It's wrong on healthcare. What is the problem? Low density of physicians per capita. Old curricular program of medical schools. Example of today's professor leads to perpetuity of lone ranger culture. What you decided to do? Let's talk a little bit deeper. Who are the stakeholders? Government, hospital, physicians. What was the proposal? To create a medical school with a new kind of curriculum clean slate. So, an institution like ours, we have a hospital recognized as one of the best hospitals in Latin America with a strong commitment to quality since a long time, a strategic partner of IHI, and recognizes it in Brazil for its excellence in processes and the physician staff engaged in management. We have an institute of teaching of, with more than 4,000 students. We have six units in Sao Paulo and Rio just to teach people we have one of the best MBA programs. We do research. We have reputation. It's not simple because you are creating something very different from what we are used to work. We do not have a medical school. We have traditionally a hospital, but we took the challenge. And we're going to start with a medical school soon in the beginning of the next year. And I can tell you that right now we have more than 1,000 candidates, 10,000 10, candidates to 50 places that we're going to offer each semester. Close to our hospital, we have the second largest slum without basic health services. What is the situation? It is estimated that we have there 
62,000 inhabitants, people that need health care, people that need health promotion, and people that need and they have social needs. What is the problem? It's a population with low income. It's a population that has lack of access to health services and difficulties to have access to health promotion and social resources. And let's follow the same way of thinking. Who are the stakeholders? The hospital, the government. What is the proposal to create a program to these people? Einstein program at the community of Paraisopolis. And what we did? First, we decided that we are going to take care of almost 13 childish population. But instead of staying with just with these children, we decided that we're going to take care of part of the adults, almost 50%. And these are the numbers. These are the things that we're doing, not only working on healthcare assistance, but also trying to work on education, because one of the main problems that you can observe today in terms of discussing healthcare is the asymmetry of knowledge. People, they do not have an access to healthcare assistance. They do not have access also to understand what is important on healthcare assistance. People do not have access to understand what is value on healthcare. And because of this, we have a lot of disparities. People are asking for things that are not necessarily good for them. And we did it. These strategies are working, and this specifically can show something interesting in terms of the reduction of admissions inside of the hospital due to respiratory disease because we were there inside of the slum. And we can go to another contribution that can be made trying to integrate different stakeholders. We have a long waiting list for transplants and lack of centers in the country. This is the context with a great number of patients in the waiting list. And what is the problem? Lack of qualified hospitals, lack of resources to reduce the waiting list. And I remember when we decided that we are going to create a transplant program. Who are the stakeholders? Once again, government, hospital, physicians. What is the proposal? To create, in terms of cooperation, between private and hospitals, public and the government, an alternative for this program. And we did inside of our hospital, after 12 years, almost 3,000 transplants, 93% public funding by the social service just 7% private. And you're gonna see that here you have all kinds of transplants that we do inside of the institution. It has changed a lot our institution because in the moment that we brought this high complexity, we had to develop other skills related to high complexity. And this kind of earning, we cannot measure with money because it's knowledge, it's experience. And our institution has changed a lot because of this kind of initiative. Here you can see that the patient survival rates are higher than the whole state of Sao Paulo and comparable to the best results that you're gonna observe all over the world according to UNUS. Most of the patients who are transplanted in cost-effective program, liver and kidney, more, pro more progress is needed for other programs, heart and lung, since we have to understand that every time that you spend a lot of money in one case, you have to compare to the GDP of each country according to the health economy. But it's not sufficient. We had to train the public system in the areas of organ procurement, donation, and transplant at the national level, fostering and creation of more centers and transplantation teams in the country because we need equity. And we create a realistic simulation course. We make some practical course. We create a post-graduation course in donation and organ. And these are the numbers. People that were trained and the idea of the transplantation has been spread all over the country. And this is a real contribution that can change by the time with 
artificial organs, but till now is something that's going to be very useful, not only for this purpose, but to create a new mentality of working a great group all together. But if you have more problems, like lack, lack of specialized physicians in small cities and countryside, and this is a situation we have an equal access to health care all over the country. What is the problem? Lack of financial resources. The physicians, they want to work in downtown of large cities. It happens all over the world. It's not different in our country. Our, in our country. How we can contribute? We can work on telemedicine. Who are the stakeholders? Hospital and government. What is the program? to create a telemedicine program. That's what we did, mainly when we started with the first public hospital. And now we have a support for ICU patients in public hospital. We created a center of opinion to follow some specific case in units that are outside of our reality, outside of our hospital, and our doctors, they started to take part of the decisions of our other centers. We have partners, it's true, industry, and even the Ministry of Health. And here you can observe what is happening. Indicators in programs where we have a second opinion trying to help these people, how these numbers change on scam and stroke, on myocardial infarction, on sepsis, or septic shock. This is a way that you also can bring together new opportunities to improve quality under a big population. The main contribution of telemedicine-based intervention for the tertiary to the second hospital is to avoid unnecessary transfers because sometimes are very simple that you have to just to align. And you can improve medical decision making in real time by an effective expertise transfer. So, what are the challenges of the health system? We have a new context. Complexity and dependency of very various stakeholders, which sometimes act competitively and subtract value of the whole. The solution, the key, is an engagement of all the stakeholders collaboratively, working with a larger goal, the triple way is a good reference. What is the lesson? Leading healthcare institution should not wait for government or other entities to take action when they step up to the plate and lead. Other stakeholders follow, and as a result, there is a generation of value for the healthcare system. I can tell you that sometimes when we start to take our decisions, or take our first movements, people, they, in the very beginning, they consider it a little bit strange. When they say that you really want to change, this feeling of strange becomes something a little bit more than strange. I would say that in the limit, sometimes people, they react even with aggression. And in a longer period, these people, they do not look at you. But I can assure you that if you are absolutely con convict, if you are absolutely sure about your values, about your ideas, your proposals, in the long term, you're going to be respected. And this is the main goal. And this is something that I do believe. We can change since we decide to work in the right way with values, with commitment, and with ethics. Very, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, I have had a pleasure to visit your hospital, and uh, I'm um, now, as last time, very impressed of how you systemize the information you have and what you can uh, uh, have an output of that uh, for doing the work uh, much better. So uh, once again, one big applause for... Uh,
we have some time for some questions, if there are, are any. Over there. I think you have to rise and uh, to talk loud. <laughs> hospitals are in Israel and they are in America and in Belgium. Are you planning on expanding into other countries? Uh, I'm not Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Our hospital is just in Sao Paulo. We have connections and we have a lot of research and we make a lot of interchange with many institutions all over the world even with MD Anderson and Cleveland Clinic here. And some of the examples, they were very good for us. When I presented you the idea of the hip arthroplasty, this is something that we brought from the hospital for special surgery. Because we could not understand what was happening that the average time that they had there was much smaller than ours. And I think that when you have good references and you make this interchange, in the same way that you look for somebody to audit your processes, it's much easier for you in terms of leadership to make the changes that are unnecessary. Doctors, many times, they are very reactive. And even when you want to read Machiavelli, you're going to say that people that want to want to change is probably because that situation is very good for them. They are not thinking about long term and about the others. And I do believe that you can change and you have to confront people that in the first moment they be ag can be against you. But if you are fair and you're going to present the right uh, reasons to make the change, you can change. And we come from outside, it can be even easier. That's the reason that we make all these connections. Good evening. I'm Professor Kvarnier from Oslo, Norway. I work for the Innovation. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate you. Uh, you have so much energy. Uh, and you are actually building a new culture, which is what we need in order to be able to integrate and improve. How many years have you been working with this, on this, with people, in order to gather the enthusiasm you're actually able to achieve? Well, uh, I have been the president of the institution since 2001, uh, but I have been working there in the hospital since I was a child. <laughs> My father was a volunteer. The president of Albert Einstein is a volunteer. I make my life as an eye doctor. If you have problems with the eyes, please come to Sao Paulo. I can fix a lot of glasses here. I can do surgery. Everybody's going to be happy. But I'm very lucky because I think that the values in our institution, they are so strong that what I need to do was just trying to emulate and to stimulate people. We have a professional group that work under me, people that are very uh, professional, people that they know exactly what they have to do. We work under governance, so I'm much more related to the strategic work. We have a board of trustees that integrated just by volunteers from many fields of work. The great part, they are doctors. And uh, I, I, I could say that probably it was, uh, I was very lucky because the whole environment in my institution helps a lot. Even for somebody like me, I used to <laughs> joke with our people, see, I have not a chance to study Harvard and my English is not that good. <laughs> but I think that things are happening. So I have to thank God. Why not? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, any more questions? Okay. Thank you once again. Thank you. This has been really interesting, and um, uh, we would like to hear more from you uh, another time. Um, now we have to.
close this session. Uh, the next uh, session uh, will begin at uh, 2.15. Uh, there you will find more information uh, in the conference program. Uh, so, so far, so good. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of uh, today's conference. Thank you.